community. Developing an online community is something seems like everybody's talking about these days. I had an online community in my class. It's like you've got them coming in on an airplane all together as a class and communicating and discussing and so forth. And lo and behold, you have this little community that forms where people appreciate a little bit of humor that you might throw into that online class. Well, communities are vital for the success of an online class. Maybe. I'm going to talk to you about components that will help that course become more successful if, in fact, communities are important to you. This program is coming from Indiana University in Bloomington. Introductions, icebreakers, just having students talk about themselves a little bit, sharing knowledge creates community. Celebrating their accomplishments, both internally to the class and externally, might help develop community shared history. They've accomplished something. They've gone through some critical events in the class, some core courses. They might build community because they all survived it. They survived that activity. Then there's belongingness. They're members of something. They have identity. I'm a part of this class. I'm a member of this group. I'm a member of this community. I'm a part of this neighborhood. I give to and I take from that community. There might be a purpose for this class, goals for this class, a stated mission, with rituals and people that you bring in every week or activities that you do that you accomplish, where it, as a result you're building respect for team members and trust across each other. Sharing knowledge, sharing learning, sharing the outcomes of an activity, get students to mix with one another. They form teams and build projects as they do that. They get to know insights about each other. They share personal uh, tactics and strategies for solving problems. They give to the group and they take from. They give and receive knowledge to the class. When you have that, you have communities. If you're just browsing, you have a portal. The difference between a portal and a community. A community you're a member of and providing information for. Where you have influence over it, you participate within it, you might create a podcast or a blog not just receive stuff from the instructor. Tasks might in turn be embedded in the real world. Pictures, profiles of people where you see them, you get to know them. There's some sense that you are a member and you belong to a group. There might actually might be students who create t-shirts. My students said I survived Dr. Bunk's online class. I knew it was hard. I didn't know it was that hard. Um, some students never want to leave the class. They want to stay. How do you replicate that kind of activity where students don't want to leave the class. This is a challenge that we all have to have students be at the point where they want to build t-shirts that they survived this class, that they don't want to leave the class. Well, you might read up on things. You might explore websites on community building. You might look at what people have written about building communities. There's thousands of articles, I think, out there about communities that you can read about. I recommend social icebreakers. I recommend personal introductions and information. I recommend students telling favorite websites, their expectations for the course, their commitments to the class. If they post their commitments, they're less likely to drop because, hey, everyone's read their commitments, their goals. Have them post eight nouns of what best describes them. They're a blood letter, or they're a road runner, or they're a computer, or they're a traveler. Or they're a fire hose, whatever it might be. What are eight nouns that describe them? And post testimonials of students who have made it through the class. The more personal the information, the more likely that students bond with one another. Logos, t-shirts, mottos, those things are all well and good, but bonding. Galleries of students' work, galleries of prior work, glossaries, syllabi, all help rally students around something they can find online, whether it's art and photo media, like in the Omnium project at the University of New South Wales, or you might have digital storytelling projects, like uh, Bernard Robin has posted a compendium of digital storytelling at the University of Houston, down in Texas. And you might have all these ways of getting student work on the table in a gallery to explore their artwork, their ideas. Coordinate global collaborations among students. Get students beyond their, your classroom so they get to know each other in other venues, get to know their peers around the world. Maybe use a video camera of some kind and have your students engage in some kind of an online webinar with experts 
students around the world and other students using DimDim, Dim, Illuminate, Adobe Connect Pro. You might have a DimDim Dim with up to three currently uh, free up to 20 people. Same with uh, V Y E U Y E W View, Illuminate, Adobe Connect Pro. All these tools are ways to build synchronous activities, real-time events where you get to know someone maybe a little bit better. You can touch them a little bit with a with a live session, if you will. You also might want to build activities for work teams around shared interests. Instead of assigning students to set groups, you might look for their interest groups and form teams that way. You might have students reflect on any internship or practicum experiences on the web and then link their ideas together in a summary post of some kind. Connect them together. Maybe have students vote on tasks, suggest new tasks or assignments for the class. Use something like Mr. Poll or Micro Poll to get their points of view. Maybe get the minority point of view uh, understood so you can pull that out so the majority doesn't dominate discussion in the class and it's more of a democratic process to the class. Foster interaction and feedback among students and when you've done that archive what's gone on for the next semester to see a really interactive class to see students who know and respect each other have those prior semester work available so that the, the class itself continues over time. You don't just have a one-off class but you have a continued class. You all are members, graduates, alumni of this class. It's a wonderful, warm experience to be a member of this particular class. That's the way to do it. Mentors, potentially tutors, experts who might come in from some kind of e-mentoring network you find on the web, some kind of e-coaching network. In the corporate world, they have Triple Creek Associates providing open mentoring. But in higher ed, in K-12, in nonprofit, there are a number of ways to build mentoring into a class. And boy, if you can add mentors, if you can add outside people and get them interested in your class, your students like, wow, we've got, you know, these people around the world, peers in other universities going to work with us and talk to us. Challenge students with material. You know, don't get them napping through it, but challenge them to think about it. Have students responding actively to questions that you pose. Survey them with tools like Zoomerang and SurveyMonkey that are free for you to use on the web. Even post pictures or profiles of students or videos from events that you've had. If you've had a special event that occurred in your class, you might be able to post that up online. Have some kind of website where you have uh, awards, ceremonies, or something that students can go to to show their friends or their spouse or their grandparents or parents. <clears throat> the more places you have that touch people's hearts as well as their minds, the more likely you'll have community because it's affect plus it is cognition. So Flickr and Picasa are ways to share pictures of what might have happened in the class. So it's time for you now to build communities within your classroom setting. It's time for you to think about what are the components that might enable me to wrap around more successful class activities. How might I, in turn, create trust building, introductions, social icebreakers, accomplishments, identity, rituals, mission, logos, all these things, you know, teaming activities, all these things can kind of work together so that you can create a place, a virtual space, where you and your students don't just go to do work, but go and anticipate the next time, can't wait to get there, and don't want to leave. That's the charm of an online community. It's not always possible, but it can be done and you can, in turn, be excited about doing something in your class. Good luck building communities.